you all to the uh, regular scheduled council meeting for May 1st, 2017 at 7 p.m. Mr. Collier. Mayor Lowry. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Lindsay. Here. Mr. Lighty. Here. Mr. Rick Lowry. Here. Mr. Lethley. Here. No, Mr. Craybrock. No, Mr. Craybrock. <clears throat> Six members present. Thank you, sir. We understand why tonight's invocation by Councilman Ethan Reynolds. All right. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for giving us this blessing of being able to live in the greatest country in the world where we can assemble freely and exchange thoughts and ideas. Even if we disagree, we don't have to worry about persecution. Uh, Heavenly Father, bless this meeting as we continue to move New Club in the right direction. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 And we'll do the pledge tonight. Five right here. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, before we move on, uh, I know there's a lot of kids in the audience tonight. If you have any cell phones or anything, just put them on vibrator, turn them down. We greatly appreciate that. Uh, moving on to actions on the regular scheduled council meeting for April 17, 2017. So Second. I have a motion by uh, Mr. Lindsay. Yes, sir. Second by Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Before we vote, Mayor, I just wanted to note that I did make the corrections that you had noted in the last meeting. Thank you, sir. And uh, the minutes I have this evening are a few pages shy because I ran out of ink on my printer, but they are completed. You guys got the, the live copy. So these will be turned in when I get a chance to get some more ink. So. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Council, any comments or questions? <coughs> Are you ready, sir? Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Minutes past six to zero. Thank you, sir. Moving on, communication is done tonight. We'll drop down to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of public. No like to everything the city manager report. Under action items for Bell Manor, uh, they did begin move pati uh, moving patients to the new facility last week. They still have a ton of items and equipment to move. Uh, but due to that moving, uh, we kind of backed off into scheduling for our purposes until they got their patients out. Uh, so moving forward, we still need to schedule a few things. Um, as of today, um, we have scheduled an additional meeting with Tom Hale, Director of Clark County Community Development. Wednesday at 3.30 p.m., he's going to walk through the building and do some of the structural building analysis. And then also tomorrow at 2 p.m., we have Winco uh, coming in to just do an architectural analysis to see if our vision and their vision kind of match up with how the best layout of that building. Um, so exciting things uh, are will be happening with Twin Creeks. Now that they started moving the patients out, we'll start aggressively going with what we need to get done. Bell Manor. You mean Bell Manor? Oh, I say Twin Creeks. Yeah. Oh, sorry. With Bell Manor. I hope there's no bears laying out in Twin Creeks. Hey, uh, you, you'll also learn about great news about Twin Creeks yeah, here in no, a minute as well. Yeah, we do know what you were talking about later. Go Absolutely. Ahead. Absolutely. Um, I did meet with two moving companies last week, so I'm still waiting to get their close backs. I got one out of Springfield and then also a two men in a truck out of Vandalia. Ideally, we want to keep all this work here in Clark County, but if we do have to go across county lines to get the better deal for our citizens, we will do so. Um, uh, Bell Manor, the utility bills have been updated they, to reflect the kilowatt and CCF's uh, use. Um, but please note that both DPNL bills for us and them are based off variable demand CCC, uh, K kilowatts. So we're not going to know exactly what they pay. Uh, it's just based off demand. Um, but we have an idea based off the dollar amount. But when that's broken down to CCF, it varies. Um, community meeting. We have the Tecumseh New Carlisle Elementary School opened May 25th, 2017, starting at 6.30 for the community meeting at the request of council. Do all council members have that availability? Because I do need to sign an agreement and send it back to the elementary school. Yes, I do. Yes, 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 yes. across the board? Yes. Other than, obviously, Mr. Craigwalker. All right, so I will get that agreement finalized. 
And moving on down under informational items, Congressman Warren Davis Davison has changed his mobile office hours from 1.30 to 2 instead of 2 to 2.30. 2 to 2 that is always on the same day. It's still the fourth Tuesday of every month, and it still is at the city building. So if you do want a minute to go in and talk with one of his representatives about any questions or concerns that you may have, just please note the time change on that. Again, the day did not change. Online utility payments, we are finalizing some contract terms. Uh, legislation will be very soon to council for approval. There is a third party payer out there that we've got a few phone calls at, and it is strictly a third party payer. And what they do is it's a bill pay agency. You or anyone wanted to contact this company and you wanted them to pay the bills for you. You give them your account numbers and then whatever access they need money wise. They go ahead and pay your bills on their behalf. But what happened was a citizen had set this up a couple of years ago to pay their new Carlisle utility bill. Well, what they did is they decided to go to our website, take a screenshot of our website picture and put it on theirs to make it look like when you go to pay your online bill, you're actually at the city's webpage. Well, I contacted the company, let them know they used that uh, image with no permission. They have since taken it down. But we did get a few calls about the online bill, bill say not working at the city. And we're scratching our head as to why, because nothing's been finalized yet. But that's through research we found out. There is a third party vendor out there that started paying bills on behalf. And then when I instructed them to take the image down off their website that mirrored our website, they happily complied. <coughs> if you happen to Google search, pay your water and sewer bill, you can go online and goes to that site. Does it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the side of it. So they manipulated the Google search results. It looks like. So uh, just beware, because if you do pay through that, it will come to us, but it takes a lot of time. And if you're paying that bill online and your bill's due in two days, we might not get it. So we will look at it as your bill's not being paid. So it's I guess sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't because it has worked before. Because we know somebody did use that feature, but it took so long for that bill to get to us that we just assumed they didn't pay and their water was shut off. So just be cautious of what online tool you are using. Uh, again, Madison Street School, and uh, uh, we'll, I'll be researching that along with the ATVs, and that will be upcoming. Memorial Day Walk 2017, planning is underway. There will be more information to come. It's looking like everything will mirror what happened at the previous events, but I still don't got confirmation from all the players yet. But it is Saturday, May 27th. We will meet at 11.30 at Howard's IGA. Uh, you can walk from IGA down to the cemetery. Uh, the walk begins at noon, or you can just be down at the cemetery about 12, 15, 12, 30, if you don't want to do that long walk. I think last year, too, we had some citizens actually hang out at the Domino's parking lot and kind of met up with the walk down at Domino's and just finished that short walk to the cemetery. Uh, it's a great event. The cemetery looks great, and it's a good time to come out and pay homage to those who we have lost. City of New Carlisle board openings. I think Mr. Reynolds at the last council meeting has suggested that we mention these at, uh, at least once a month. So I'll be mentioning them at, at the second meeting of each month until they are filled. And again, we still have vacancies on the Human Rights Board, the Tax Review Board, the Civil Service, and Parks and Rec. Uh, Parks and Rec is still kind of iffy because we have a deadline out of May 8th. Um, that board has not been revived, I think, since 2006 or 2008. So before we initiated new members on it, I just sent a courtesy letter out to the existing members to see if they want to continue on. If I don't hear back from any of them, we'll be starting that board from fresh. If not, if we do hear back from them, we'll retain anyone who wanted to still be on that board. Everything <coughs> still has to be approved by council. So after that deadline, we'll put the uh, approval, yay or nay, in the council with the new members, plus any kind of existing members that we may have had. And moving on to the city manager report. Mr. Councilman Lowry had given me some information on an income tax reciprocity um, and how that relates to what may be on the ballot for the city of New Carlisle, which, which is an income tax credit. Uh, the two terms, I think, are used interchangeably, but they do not mean the same thing. So I did attach a little uh, email from our former tax administrator who gives a very brief overview of what a reciprocity is versus what a tax credit is. And the easiest way to kind of explain it is a reciprocity, basically you share your revenue. All right, where a tax credit is, there's no sharing of revenues at all. Uh, the tax credit, basically, we would just give you a credit for taxes paid elsewhere. Um, and the reciprocity is um, you would, if you work in Dayton and you live in New Carlisle, the two communities would send money back and forth to one another. We don't do that. Those types of deals are not in place anymore. 
you do see reciprocity deals between states. Like if you lived in Cincinnati and worked in northern Kentucky, those are very common. But at the municipal level, they are not. They've been non-existent since the 70s. What's on potentially on the ballot for us is an income tax credit, which will be absolutely devastating to the city. Um, most of our people leave the city to work. We don't retain a lot of our own residents, nor do we have a lot of industry to make up for those people that leave. New Carlisle has an income tax rate of 1.5%. So for the sake of easy discussion, if you work in Springfield and their tax rate is 2%, we would give you a credit for that 1.5% that you paid that would be due to New Carlisle, but you paid to Springfield. So what happens is you end up paying where you work and you don't pay where you live, which makes absolutely zero sense. Why would you want to contribute to, to a tax base where you work and not contribute to your own tax base to better your own community? community? These kind of credits work in bigger cities where they have a lot of industry. Um, for example, City of Dublin, I was looking at their website. They have a lot of people who leave the City of Dublin to work, but what they do have is a lot of industry. So they can get away with giving their citizens a tax credit because their industry or the people who come in, to, come in there to work and don't live there make it up. They bring about $88 million a year in tax. We don't have that set. We don't have a lot of people coming in New Carlisle to work, and we have a lot of people leaving New Carlisle to work. So I know a ballot has been, I mean, a, a, a signature page has been passed around. I would highly recommend you do your research uh, to find out what the ripple effects to that is your local, what would be the ripple effects of that tax credit passing to your local government. Um, I can say right now it will not be good. Um, there will be some massive cuts coming and we would lose a significant amount of income tax. Um, I think maybe the supporters of this income tax need to take this up at the state level or maybe contact the place where they work to see if that place where they work can give them kind of any relief for what they pay to where they live. But again, devastating to the city. Uh, as time goes on, we'll definitely get more of that. But we did want to just put a short word out there. What is reciprocity versus what is the tax credit? Use interchangeably often, but they do not mean the same thing. If you have any questions on that, I will try my best to answer that. You can shoot me an email or approach me after the meeting. Give me a speaker. Can we go ahead? No. Can I just get down? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, cool. Uh, also in here is a pool flyers uh, for the season passes. So basically, all the information for our 2017 pool season is right here, and the application for the pool pass is right in the back. We are looking forward to another fantastic <coughs> year. Uh, if you do get a pool pass this year, we have bought a machine that actually will print out an actual pass. Uh, we're going to do this to help alleviate fraud. Uh, our old system, we had a lot of people just come and say, this is my name and this is the password that we use. Uh, but now that we have the machine, um, we're actually going to be printing out physical cards that say New Call Out Pass with your picture on it. So definitely a step in the right direction with that. Again, pool season had a fantastic year last year, lots of good events. Please be a part of that and get yourself a pool pass. There's more. I lost the spot. All right. All right. Twin Creeks assessments. Great news. Uh, the city has received one hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars. One hundred and thirty-three back. This is Kennedy Trust. That's Kennedy Trust. This is something different. Okay. Uh, back from the uh, Twin Creek settlement, um, I was expecting a little bit less than that, but how they did the calculation, it, it, they, well, they weighed more on the past penalty and interest, interest versus more what is the actual past due. So when they applied that formula, we got a little bit back, more back than I thought we were. So this is great news for us to get back 133000 of the 189000 sale price. We also retained, and council may, can, may be able to answer this, we also retained, I want to say, four or 5000 back that we knocked off of that sell price for what we had administered on that property while it was in that land reutilization program. So how many times we had to cut the grass or how many times I had to sit at my desk and manage some things. We could take out of that sell price for that. So we did, and when they went through and reimbursed all the taxing jur uh, jurisdictions that were past due, we came out on top with 132000 So I am thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly ecstatic about that. And on top of that, we also got a settlement back from the Kennedy Trust lawsuit that the city has been battling for some quite some time. And we have re received the settlement check for $130,000 back from that lawsuit. Um, so moving forward, it is bulleted here, we will need a work session, um, if council chooses to, to discuss how the city uh, will use the funds from Twin Creeks reimbursement and from the Kennedy Trust settlement. I do believe we had prior conversation on this before. I am still on the fact that it needs to go forward total debt payment and get that reduced. 
Agreed. So we need to set a meeting now? Is if council true? chooses to have a work session, that is up to you. But if we're on the same page with how to Excuse allocate me. that money. Mr. Mr. Lindsay. Can, can, and you, you'll have to answer this because I don't know. Maybe uh, Mr. Lowry may know. Do we have to make a motion to do this to what we want to do with this money? Or do we just tell you if council's in agreement, put it towards the debt? Um, we need to, we definitely need to proceed it. We need to amend our appropriations to, in, okay. to increase this. And in, in. um, I don't think we need a work session to dictate how we do it. Um, I think in the original thing, we had said something about maybe taking 30,000 out of the Kennedy Trust settlement to kind of reimburse ourselves for the extra legal fees we incurred. And then the rest would go to, towards debt payment. We guys want to all go to debt payment. Mr. Lauer. Two questions. Sure. Well, question and comment. Okay. Mm -hmm. First comment is two hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. I believe would tear the manager street property down. I also think that you need to worry about your debt the city has. The building's been there a long time. It needs to go. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, that's that's my thought. And and I, I honestly think it's going to be a lot more than two hundred sixty-six thousand to get that school turned down. It's worth looking at. Second thing, ATVs. We'll be researching ordinances that govern. I think we've got two or three of them, and we've done them a couple of times. I don't think we need ordinances to govern that. I think we need to enforce the ordinances we have, and if, if need be, to make the fines a little bit higher. So that that's a policy decision. Caught, I mean, we have we already have the ordinances. We've redone them at least twice that I know that I know of, mm -hmm. and it's not helping. What I meant by that is I need to research the ordinances to find out what they say. It's okay. not that we're going to redo them or anything. Okay, I was and that's the way I took it. That was okay. Passed. But anything policy related, that is council's liberty to introduce legislation okay. to change policy all you want. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's what needs to be done. Sure. So. Mr. Evans. I've been a staunch advocate of using both sets of monies to pay down the debt. I mean, I wouldn't see why we need a work session if a majority of us I are, completely are, are in favor of paying down the, the debt. I mean, why, why pay, no offense, I, mean, I don't mind paying you, but why pay you more to sit in another meeting that we don't need to be at? I'm salary. I get paid no matter oh, where I'm at. So, <laughs> no, I, I agree with you 100%. I think our debt profile needs to be looked at. Um, there's Ms. Harris, what else did we discuss? Putting a portion to, then we had another plan, plan well, B. Well, the bonds and refinancing, we're going to take care of the other debt. So we were talking no, yeah, about general twin, op. Yeah. twin <clears throat> creeks in general. Yeah, so we're refinancing our general op, some of our general op yet. Our twin creeks is not in there. So, <clears throat> basically how what debt do we need to put it on we already the bond refi that we're doing is going to re reduce what we pay on that um so do we spread it out and put all of it towards twin creeks because it's essentially where it all comes from and get that out of the picture or do we put a little bit on this debt and a little bit on that debt and a little bit on this debt okay. i think we need to get twin creeks out from underneath this as soon as possible i'll tell you what we'll just Let's oh. just go down the line if anyone wants to speak. So, Mr. Lighty. No, Twin Creeks. Let's, let's get it done. I, I agree. We need to get rid of Twin Creeks as soon as we can and be done with it. Oh, totally agree. I mean, we're getting ready to vote a resolution to transfer $90,000 in, so might as well just. It's 90000 here, we pay. Yeah. So, why not try to eliminate it as soon as possible? I agree with you. So. And I'm just echo the same thing in here. Okay. Absolutely. That's the albatross. You're ready. And John agrees because, you know, obviously he, he didn't say anything. Right, John, so, <laughs> he, 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 so he concurs. He concurs, I do. Mr. Lowry, all due respect. I have a different opinion, but I mean, five people's already voted, and I'm going to buck the system. I mean, you know, it's a good idea, but I would also like to see Madison Street go away. But I understand. Because can, things can be done with it if it does. And sure. It's, it's, you know, it's also an opportunity. So. Okay. Okay. So we will move forward to apply to Twin Creek's debt reduction. Mr. Lindsay? I do have one more question. I'll piggyback off Mr. Lowry. Uh, <clears throat> did we ever get an estimate what it would cost to tear Madison Street down? They go from 266 up to 380 plus additional more for asbestos. And there's asbestos in there. And that was what? It's in that paper. So, so this, this 263. I would say hold off on Madison School because I'm going to try to get another round of block grant money like I did the first time around. <laughs> it just may take some time because we missed our vote for a while. Um, but I, that was my follow up. <laughs> I, I think that's probably the best route with that because right now it's going to cost us, if we put this 260 down toward it, it's going to be more money. And if we do that the next year, then our general fund kind of helps support that. I, even though I'm right there with you, Madison School needs to come down. 
I would like to find funding opportunities to do that. Okay. This money that we have here has all been a result of Twin Creeks. Even the Kennedy Trust Settlement kind of circles back into that Twin Creeks, you know, and I think that's a big thorn on our side. The sooner we get that paid off, I think it might open up monies for other things. And maybe down the road we might have to go into a little bit of debt, if not a lot of block grant money to cover up the whole expense like we did last time. Um, or we might have to take it out of the general club. But I think there's better alternatives for Madison Tree School than just to try to use this money. Thanks, sir. Absolutely. Mr. Reynolds. Uh, do you know when, if, if at all possible, I know that uh, uh, the majority of council voted yes on not, uh, or voted no on not tearing down Madison last year. So my question is like, do you know when that would come back up? Or possibly, uh, I know that was a year ago, year that, and that, half. that was a year ago. That was with uh, David Harrier who had helped us with yeah, the yeah. Bank, Block grants so. are like, I think it's every year, but I think how the money is disbursed to count is a larger portion of it, maybe on year two, if those year ones. And please don't quote me on this. I'm not a block grant expert, yeah. but I, I can, I'm going to meet Mr. Hale one day, <laughs> okay, and good. he's administrator of that, so I can start picking up. Right. Good, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds, Mr. Lowry. Did you make copies of this? No, I just thought you wanted to tax the process. Okay. Uh, you want, I can, I can I let everybody look at it if they want to, because this is the whole story of Madison Street School right here. And in demo quotes from 2008 and 2010 vary from 75000 to 300000 depending on if materials are removed or buried at site. If anybody wants to take this and copy it and give it back to me, I have no problem with that. That's the, there's asbestos in there. Right, yeah. so that's what I'm saying. But here's the whole story on when it. Who was the 75,000 low one? The lowest I saw was like 260. It doesn't say who it was. Gotcha. It just said it was very nice. Mm. Okay. But if anybody wants to take a copy, make sure I get a copy back. I'm good. Oh, take, take Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lowry. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Lowry, I'll get with you after the meeting and get a copy of that. Okay. Can I just, I'll, I'll can I just forward it out to all council members from our board? And if you would make copies and bring to the next meeting, I already, have it. I already scanned it. Okay. Okay. Oh, right, you already have a copy tomorrow? Yep. Oh, okay. okay. And tomorrow when I get out, I'll just forward it out to everybody. Okay. Thanks, right? sir. Not a problem. Yeah. All right, so no work session, all Kennedy Trust, that's your payment on that, correct? Yeah. Awesome. Um, that's all I have for the city manager report. Are they happy to entertain any questions? Council, any questions for the city manager? Nope. Thank you, sir. All right, dropping down to comments from the members of the public. If you have any comments or questions tonight, please go to the podium, your name, address, and you'll have uh, five minutes. Kelly Bartlett, 533 Glen Avenue. <coughs> and Mr. Bridge spoke uh, regarding the uh, petition circulated um, regarding the income tax credit, and I did want to make a few clarifications on that. Uh, Mr. Bridge did speak that it would be an income tax credit for residents that pay uh, taxes to another municipality. And I did want to clarify that there's some people that work outside the city that aren't paying another tax. Um, so a credit would not be administered. For example, folks that work in the city of Beaver Creek where no income tax is assessed. Um, workers at the base, there's a statute that says uh, workers at the base not be um, assess the local income tax where they work, they would continue to pay the full amount. People that work in a township, uh, they're also not assessed um, another amount. Folks like myself that work in the city of Dayton have an effective tax rate of 4% right now. And when I circulated this petition, a lot of folks are telling me, well, not a lot, but several say, if I had known this, I never would have moved here if I knew there wasn't a crime. Um, a couple of people said, yeah, we're thinking about moving because there's no credit. And certainly, you know, a lot of uh, municipalities have uh, more industry where they can assess a tax to people that work there and don't live there. Um, so even setting aside the Heber Heights, the Inglewoods, the Fairborns, all that have 100% tax credit. Um, other municipalities with tax credits, 100% tax credits include Jamestown, Botkins, Bradford, Carlisle, Cedarville, Lewisburg, Minster, St. Henry, St. Mary's, and South Charleston. Um, so it's not, uh, I think, a method that only works 
um, or if it's only in place in, in larger cities. So I would just ask uh, that council and potentially voters consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, anyone else? Comments or questions? This is your time. Uh, Judy Bible, 806 White Pine Street. I just had two questions. Uh, one. Excuse me, ma'am, real quick. He didn't. He, he didn't. Can, you, can you repeat your name again? Judy Bible. 806 White Pine. You said 806 White Pine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, two questions. One regarding the income tax. I'm just curious. Uh, what? How much do we pay CCA a year, or are they keeping a percentage of our income tax that they collect, or? Ballpark, what that comes out half. to a year. Mr. Bridge, yeah, can you touch on that? Do you Absolutely. Have the answer to it? It's based off a of percentage of what they collect. There is no set dollar amount. Okay. Um, I really, Miss Harris, you know the exact percentage? I think we estimated in this budget it was going to be about um, 3% of maybe 40,000, mm -hmm. okay. which um, was in exchange for the one and a half employees that we were paying to do the income tax in-house. So it was an actual savings for okay, That's 20, what I was 000. curious about is whether it offset Absolutely keeping, keeping people employed in town as opposed to sending it off somewhere else. Well, can I, can I the, the big decision to that, not only the savings rep or staff position, but what CCE had, what was a, a very attractive to me. We don't have the ability in-house to compare our income tax to the federal database. All right, everybody files federal taxes. They do, and yeah. what that's going to do is hopefully catch a lot of people that haven't had, that haven't filed moving in the past, but also will not didn't plan to file moving forward. Okay. So we're going to play with the numbers. Okay. You know, if it brings us a lot more, then great. If we're not seeing what we have, we can revert back to our numbers. Okay. And then the other question I had it has to do with the water tower and water rates and stuff. It's been what about two months or so ago we had that meeting about redoing the water tower. At that time, they were talking, there was something mentioned about forming a committee combined with citizens as well as council members to discuss different options for paying for that as opposed to just doing a flat increase on the water rates. Has that anything been done with that or what the status of that is? I remember hearing that, but I can't remember, to be honest, whose idea or, or, or where it comes from. Does council remember anything on that? I vaguely remember it, to be honest. I thought it was from someone in the audience, but I'm not 100% yeah. sure. Okay, so, but is there a status? Has anything further been discussed on how they're going to pay for that? Uh, I, would assume that the, I would assume at the, at the, uh, the next meeting, the, the second meeting of this month, I would assume that would go into discussion. Okay, all right. Ahead. They've, been, they've been working uh, hard with uh, companies and contractors and working their calculators. And, on how to get it paid, so. as opposed to just doing a big increase. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Anyone else? Good evening. My name is David Van Stoy, property owner at 202 North Henry Street. I'm up here in regards to the trash service. Uh, as a business owner, I'm already paying for a trash service. And I like that opportunity to still use my trash service instead of paying for two like, different trash services. Mm -hmm. I understand um, trying to make sure all the trash gets picked up. A uh, solution would be, I thought, would an application for business owners like me to fill out a paper, pay five bucks, cover the cost and show proof of trash service so we can make sure that it's getting disposed correctly. Um, I think there's a resolution to this situation that kind of help us not be overburdened with more trash costs. So if you would please consider it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? All right, thank you very much. <coughs> New reports on tonight. We'll move down to resolution, and all three will have action on them tonight. Yes, sir. When you are ready. Mr. Resolution 17-08R, introduction, public hearing, action tonight. 
a resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general fund to the Twin Creeks Infrastructure Bonds Debt Service Fund of the City of New Carlisle. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Rose. Move to adopt resolution 17 08R. Second. second. Yes, second from Mr. Luthley on that. Okay. And an explanation of this resolution. This is a yearly resolution we do every year when we um, have um, transfer money from our general fund to another uh, fund item. In this case would be our debt retirement. We have to do uh, uh, legislation in place to make that happen. So again, this is a yearly ordinance where we take money out of our general fund and we put it in our Twin Creeks infrastructure bond uh, retirement for $90,000. Council, any questions or comments? When you're ready, Mr. Collier. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Resolution 1708R passes 16. It almost got me too, don't worry. Do what? It almost got me too, don't worry, when I was trying to read it. <laughs> got a little twisted on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Resolution 17-09R, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general fund to the debt service fund of the city of New Car Lyle. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Good morning, sir. Oh. oh, okay. I heard your voice first. It's okay. Who made the motion? Bill Lindsay. Yeah. Be second. Mr. Mayor. A second. A second. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> second. <laughs> okay. It's Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was caught up in the lost you in the moment. Yeah, I, did. I was totally lost in the moment. And again, resolution 1709R, this is the exact same format as we did with our Twin Creeks uh, debt retirement. Anytime we have to transfer money from our general fund to any other fund, we have to have legislation in place. This is our general bond retirement for 105000 from the general fund. Any questions, Council? Mr. Carter, are you ready? Mr. Leslie? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Resolution 17 09 R S is 6 0. Thank you, sir. Res resolution 17 10R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an all agreements with the Board of Clark County Commissioners for the 2017 roadway resurfacing contract. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Reynolds. Move to adopt resolution 17-10R. Second. And explanation of this resolution, Mr. Pico, please feel free to chime in if I do miss anything. Uh, this year we have decided to go with the county to bid out and manage and engineer some of our roadway projects. Uh, hopefully this will obviously give us more bang for the buck. Shared services are usually the way to go. Um, so the maximum amount the city will pay for these roads we're servicing projects is $250,000. Uh, do you want to give a list of the roads, Mr. Pico? Absolutely, thank you. Uh, currently we are going to be bidding out to have uh, all of Spinning, uh, all of Willowick, Pepperwood, Applewood, uh, up to the Spinning intersection and Cloverleaf for approximately, or an estimated amount of $206,000. And then the 235 by Whatadog for approximately twenty dollars to $21,000 to have those bid out. You get too excited, Mr. Reynolds. <laughs> Being a resident of Spinning Road, I'm excited. Uh, no, uh, I had a quick question for... Uh, Mr. Kiko, do you know about what time frame this would be? The the last I heard, they're going to go out for bid this Thursday, but it'll be completely on the county schedule. So I'm guessing within the next two to three weeks, we should know what the bid. So it'll will. be like within the year. Mm. Oh, oh, absolutely. That's yeah. what I was just checking. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. it should be done this summer. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Great. Right. Council goes for the vote. If I can, Mr. Mayor, get two seconds. 
When I took over as city manager, I sat down with Mr. Kick and said, hey, the streets, we've got some issues with the streets. He has done a fantastic job over these past two years of identifying new ways to get our street done, so hats off to you. I, last year we did all of Edbrook, this year we're doing a lot of our roads. In the past few years we've seen a lot of good road repair being done. It would not be possible without Mr. Kitko, so if you receive him, say thanks for all the hard work he does, but creative ways about how to get these roads repaired. Thank you, sir. Mr. Reynolds. Now this is a question, I guess, for Lynette, because I live on Spinning Road and it directly benefits me. Mm -hmm. I probably should abstain, correct? The road, one of the roads that he's building on, he lives I don't see him. Just double check. Yes. I don't see yes. What? Abstain. Abstain? Yes. So you need to redo your first. Uh, Hold on. She's so thinking. No. All right. no. I don't think that that's a direct conflict. All right. Fantastic. Oh, yes. Well, yes. But I appreciate you asking. <laughs> I just want to double check. So. Yeah. No appearance of impropriety at all for me. No. And Mr. Bridge, and, and also to Mr. Kick, I just want to touch on what you just said on. I mean, I, I can't count them up exactly in my head right now, but I think over the past five years, I know that you know we get a lot of complaints about road repairs, but I think over the past five years or so, maybe 10, we've seen a lot more full road repairs mm -hmm. done in that time frame. Uh, they did Plumwood, they did uh, Ger is it Ger Gerald, right off of the lake. Yeah, we've done Gerald, Flora. Uh, some of Funston, Prentice. almost all of Prentice, Prentice has been Edgebrook included. last year. Right. Uh, the big thing is, is the levy brings in 120, 130,000, so it takes, and we use some of that money for pothole repair, so not all of it goes for construction purposes, so we have to save up. So looking at next year, there may not be a big project, we may have to save a lot of that to go into the 2019 to get the large uh, project for the better bidding uh, prices. Yeah, and that's, and that's what, you know, a lot of people, we're hearing mention the uh, street levy and the wires on our roads getting fixed as quick now that we pass this levy just to keep in mind that that levy only generates around 125,000 a year so you just heard how expensive some of these roads are that you're to repair. How much was the uh, Edbrook job one more time? About 180,000 okay. but those are ju these are just overlays they are not complete reconstructions which get into the millions. Mr. Reynolds. One last follow-up. Uh, now, hi, just real quick. This was working with the uh, county engineer, correct, for the asphalt bidding that we had mentioned prior? Or is this, this something this a is, bit different? This is part of it. The only okay. the, the place where we initially see savings, like Edgebrook, cost me a little over 3000 in engineering. So I don't have to pay for engineering, but I do have to somewhat share mobilization costs. Okay. So I'm lo just looking for, because of the size of the county project, which is probably going to be just under $2 million, we get better bids for the yeah. amount of materials. Well, yeah, because I remember I talked with you and John Burr about it, how it brings down the cost because you're buying it in bulk, essentially. Sure, and, and a lot of our problem too is I do have the funds available to join this group. Sometimes I don't have them readily available yeah. at this point in time. Which was we the are case here. in 2013. Yes. And I brought it up the right. Good, I'm excited. Council, any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Kitko, very much. And <coughs> Collier, when you're ready. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Leffley? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Resolution 17-10R passes 6 0. <coughs> Moving down the ordinances, one for introduction tonight. Ordinance 17 17 introduction tonight, public hearing and action on 5 15 17, which is our next council meeting. An ordinance authorizing the city manager into an agreement for professional tank evaluation services. Thank you, sir. And down to other business, if you will. Under other business, Congressman Warren Davison will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. As mentioned earlier, the Memorial Day walk will be Saturday, May 27th. Uh, the lineup begins at 11.30 at, at, at the IGA. There will be a walk to the cemetery, and the ceremony at the cemetery will start around noon. Uh, the next Crime Watch meeting will be Wednesday, May 10th, which is week after next, correct? Yes. Is that the wrong day? Week from Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Wednesday, May the 10th, 6.30 p.m., that's here at Smith Park Shower House, and the public is welcome to that. Uh, once again, uh, Council will have a community meeting on May 25th from 
from 6.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the uh, New Carlisle Elementary School, and that will be to discuss Bell Manor, mm -hmm. facts and figures and everything there is to know about Bell Manor. And one last subject before I send it back to the mayor. Okay. The city, we talked earlier about the uh, tax credit petitions. Let me find my paperwork here. Uh, on February the 16th, 2017, the city did receive a letter from Ms. Kelly A. Bartlett, and she had indicated that she was going to uh, pass an initiative petition, and she provided the language, which we have that on record here at the city. The city did receive those, peti those petitions on April the 26th. I received those petitions on April the 28th. I did document that, and that this will be actually be part of the minutes of this, this meeting. And uh, today, I delivered the uh, petitions to the Board of Election this morning. And uh, our, my requirement is within 10 days of receiving petitions, I must deliver those to the Board of Elections. I check those for sufficiency, which means I, I check them to just to make sure there's enough signatures on the petitions. They now go to the Board of Elections and they will go through the process of checking the petition for validity. So that's where it's at. And that will also be my documentation part of the That's all I have there. Thank you, Mr. Collier. Mr. Reynolds. I move that we excuse John Kraybacher from tonight's meeting. <coughs> Second. Good. Second by Mr. Lefler. Mayor Lowry. Yes. 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 yes, to excuse <laughs> Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Lindsay? Yes. Yes, he's not here. Mr. Lighty? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. Mr. Lethley? Yes. Mr. Craybacher is excused. Six to zero. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lindsay? Mr. Collier, would it be possible to get a copy of uh, the papers you was talking about emailed to all of us? Yes. I'll get, I'll get this to you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lowry. Yes. I should have said something earlier, but I did not. There was a gentleman in the back that spoke up. I did not catch a name. I apologize even with things on I didn't hear. Um, he talked about owning a business in town and have to pay trash for the business and his house, and I think that's something. Pardon? Pay Van Square. Okay. And I think that needs to be discussed and looked at. I stated that at last meeting, and I still feel that way. If it takes a work session or whatever, I don't know. I realize we have a contract with the trash company, but maybe it was something overlooked at, was overlooked. But from what I understand, businesses are paying, what, $90 for a dumpster? I have no clue what they're paying. The businesses don't have to use waste management. They can do with whatever trash provider they want for their business. But the problem is the contract's been signed. So there is no money in the current contract, or this current contract is over, and we start new. I still think we could talk to them and see, you know, there's no harm to ask Say, look, the guy's paying you 90 bucks for a dumpster. Now you want to hit him for another 15 or whatever. And I think it needs to be looked at. Okay, that, that's, that's my thought. I'm going to do that. If you guys want to bring it open, bring it open, but it's going to cost a lot. It's, I just don't think anything is going to come of it until the contract. <coughs> that's just my professional opinion. Council, any other comments, questions before we move on tonight? Mr. Reynolds. I move we adjourn. Mr. Hall. Oh,